dry cut chop saw, abrasive chop saw, and a metal cutting bandsaw. Which one of these is going to be the best bang for the buck when put head to head? Season 5. All right, now our first contender on the list is the Evolution Power Tools Evo Saw 380, a 15-inch dry cut chop saw with the capability of cutting a variety of shapes, sizes, and types of material, including steel, stainless steel, aluminum, wood, and composites. Each Evo Saw 380 ships with a steel cutting carbide blade and can easily be changed to different metals and types with a simple blade change. The Evo Saw 380 is advertised as quicker, safer, more accurate, and economical that leaves a nice workable finish with virtually no heat, burrs, or sparks created when cutting. Next on the list is the DeWalt D28715 14-inch abrasive chop saw. Now there's not a whole lot to say about abrasive chop saws other than the fact that they do have their ranges, capabilities, possibilities, and more. Now if you look back on my Season 1 and Season 2 videos, you might recall seeing this perform a whole lot of different tasks, from tube notching to cutting for roll cages, building tube front ends, chassis components, and more. It's a pretty big staple to most fabrication shops, and definitely one that a lot of people start with. Last but not least is my Italian-made Kama EV996 Industrial Bandsaw. Now this thing features a very large cut capacity, an angle capacity of 60 degrees, a two-speed industrial 220 volt motor, large chip tray, and a built-in cooling system. Like many other bandsaws, it is definitely one thing that you want to have inside of your shop can cut just about anything you throw in front of it and more. Out of all the bandsaws I have owned over the years, this is definitely my favorite. On my workbench is a handful of different materials from steel tubing and pipe to angle iron to bar stock and all thread, flat stock, composite decking, and even a board with some nails in it. All of it will be fed into the saws to find out which saw is best. First up, which one of these saws cuts the fastest? So to make this fair and even, we're going to use the exact same size with the exact same amount of stick out. This is a 2x2 two two with a quarter inch wall steel tube, uh, very commonly used in like receiver hitches and stuff like that. We're also going to cut it into a cube. Two inches of stick out and the clock that's going to pop up here is going to start for the very second that every single one of these touches the metal. I literally got it right down to the frame. Now this evolution power saw is really friggin' loud. I didn't turn it all the way up just to save you guys that are wearing like earphones and earbuds and stuff, but it's got some volume to it. Kind of a tingy sound, if you will. Hearing protection is definitely mandatory on this one. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's friggin' loud. Not to mention some of the burrs and stuff that fly out there, but 29.2 seconds to cut through that. That is really impressive. I honestly wasn't expecting it. So let's take a look into the chop saw. This one seems to be getting some action done on this thing. It is also definitely loud. Maybe not as loud as the evolution saw. It's very, very difficult to actually, you know, decide on that one. I'm, I'm not really sure. But it's definitely getting some sparks flying through it. The whole works. 57.04 seconds. That's... Actually, I thought that was going to take a little bit longer, but... Hey, whatever. Moving on. Let's go on to the bandsaw here. This one taking its dear sweet time. Now, this is a brand new blade and I am running it at low speed, but the cool thing about bandsaws is you can talk over them. They are actually really, really quiet. But I actually expected it to go just a little bit longer than it did, which is uh, kind of surprising. But I am on low speed. I'm on turtle, not bunny. And, uh, of course, it cuts its way through here. No problem. 1 minute 30.07 seconds. And that is a nice clean cut that goes with it. Now, here's the interesting thing. I really didn't think that the evolution saw was going to cut it so quick. And I didn't think the band saw was going to cut it so slow. To be perfectly honest with you, I've never really paid that much attention to it. But some very quick number crunching here will reveal that the evolution saw cuts it in one third of the speed of the bandsaw. Not bad, not bad, but let's try something a little different. This looks like uh, some Schedule 10 pipe, maybe a two inch variety. What's really nice about evolution power tools, they have this little uh, adapter here, this little bracket, little V groove that just kind of snaps on here and that will allow you to uh, center your round uh, piece like a piece of pipe or a tube or whatever here they uh, they supply that with the saw and that's pretty awesome so let's get this set up and see how uh, how quick we get through this one just something to take note of while this is uh, doing its thing here this clip is not sped up at all and this is my actual reaction wow that was quick jeez 
and it's cool too. I'm not burning my hand. Let's take some of these chips out of here and see what kind of a mess we get out of it. All right. Now, I know you guys want to explore things like what's the cut quality and all the rest of that good stuff, you know, aside from the timing and, you know, prices and all that. And trust me, we're going to get, we're going to hit those, all right? But as I was slicing all these up, I noticed a very distinct difference in the actual byproduct of what they, uh, what these saws throw down here. So, like the abrasive saw, we already know that that's like a bunch of metal dust. But what about the man glitter that comes off of the Evo saw or even the uh, sparkly tramp oil that comes off the band saw? Which one of them leaves more? That's about how I remember it. I don't want to. This is hot, 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 hot. I am definitely going to speed this clip up here. So. I, I don't want to make you sit through all of that, but I am keeping track of all the time, and this piece actually took only an additional 14 seconds above the uh, abrasive saw to actually get the cut out here. So let's take a look. Now oh, there's a little bit of chips in the inside of there. It's probably not the uh, exact amount, but let's see if I get some of this uh, cutting fluid out here too. But you know, you know what? Let's just put that as a byproduct anyway. Not bad at all. So let's take a quick comparison of all the chips side by side here, and you notice that the band saw, the evolution saw, those both put out a much larger size chip, while the abrasive saw puts out a very fine powder, very small chip. Now, this usually doesn't mean a whole lot to a lot of people, but at the same time, think about what goes into your lungs. The large chip is less likely to be inhaled, even though the evolution saw does make them airborne. The band saw will flush them away with coolant, but the fine powder from the abrasive saw is much more dangerous to be breathing in, or much more likely to get into your lungs. You'll definitely want to be wearing a dust mask or a respirator when you use it. Right, cut quality. Which one of these is going to cut the cleanest, leave the least amount of prep or finish work that you have to do afterwards in order to actually use the part? Now, Evolution makes a pretty bold statement as to their cut quality is like so perfect and uh, you know virtually burr free. Sounds more like a bandsaw to me when I get done cutting with mine. So we're also going to put the abrasives in there just to make sure that uh, we have a comparison here so you can see them all done. Let's line all three of them up right now. This was just a little bit unexpected here on this one. The uh, bandsaw and the abrasive saw cut at the exact same speed, and just look how fast the evolution saw just rips right on through that angle iron. This is just nuts. But before we show the results, I figure I'll just leave it on a teaser. This is actually pretty cool. This is exactly how they came off of the saw. Boom, look at that. All right, so we have perfectly clean cut on the Evo saw, perfectly clean cut on the bandsaw, and on the abrasive saw, we're going to need some cleanup after that. A little bit of uh, post-cut action. Now, the next thing I wanted to test out as far as cut quality is concerned is all thread. I've seen these, you know, in the videos and all the rest of that stuff cut before, and personally, I've never seen a saw in the history of saws that ever cuts a perfect, you know, burr-free, nice, ready-to-go all-thread cut. But look closely here, the band saw, the evolution saw, both of them left nice, clean, relatively burr-free, compared to the abrasive saw, of course, but none of them actually really give a nice, perfectly clean cut on all threads. They all need some sort of chamfering or thread finishing afterwards. So, hey, you know, hey, I ran the test and my opinion still remains. All right, so we still have a board with some nails in it, uh, some composite decking, I believe this is. I don't know too much about that stuff, but uh, we also have some flat stock here. It's like four inches wide. Uh, looks like a good 3 16 inch, maybe, a, maybe an eighth of an inch thick, you know? So, I don't know. Want to just keep on cutting metal or should we just jump into the composites? I know that the saw is going to melt this. Probably don't want to be standing near that one, or at least the abrasive will. The abrasive will probably set this one on fire, so um, it's kind of like a no contender. Let's do it anyway. I have no idea how long these nails are, so we're just going to cut the end of it off. Let's see, should I cut it like this? Yeah, I'll do it like this. I'll just do a little bit because I want to make sure we have enough nail to go through all three of them. They're all three saws, so let's just start with this. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't seem to care about those. Pfft, 
sawdust though. So I'm most definitely turning my coolant off for this one. Give it a quick run here, make sure it's all dripped out of it. We're gonna do the uh, abrasive last because I got a feeling it's just gonna set it on fire. So it also gives you an idea of the uh, precision that these uh, saws can, uh, can do here. No cares there. <laughs> wow. You know, having never done that, that's pretty cool. Now it smells all like wood in here. This is a metal shop. I think I'm just gonna have to run with that obligatory, uh, don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> it's probably gonna catch on fire. I don't know, there's, a, there's enough coolant in there that uh, maybe it won't, but you never know. I got a fire extinguisher on standby right down there. Oh yeah. I say we open the door. This is definitely not meant for wood. Guess while we let that air out for a minute, let's talk about this composite decking here. Uh, you know, I'm pretty sure that the carbide is going to eat its way through it. No problem at all. Pretty sure the bandsaw is going to eat through it. No problem at all. But being that this is composite, like plasticky kind of uh, recycled bits or whatever it is, I'm not really sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure the same result's going to happen on the, uh, on the chop saw over there with it melting. So I'm definitely going to say, don't try this at home because with all that extra heat, it's going to turn like gooey, like melted plastic and start spraying everywhere. And yeah, that doesn't just, you know, come right off your skin. It just keeps on burning as it sits there. So I'm probably going to sleeve up for this one and protect myself a bit because ooh, that's probably going to sting. But for the uh, sake of knowing, we'll cut it anyway. Yep, time to open the door again. So here's where it all boils down to. Which one of these saws is gonna be the best for you? So I'm not gonna help you make that decision. You've seen what each one of them can do and all the rest of that stuff. But let's look kind of like at the budgets real quick and the things that you have to do on top of that. If you only have a couple hundred bucks to spend, grab an abrasive. Yeah, you're gonna have to spend a little extra time cleaning all that stuff up afterwards. But you know what, they've been around forever. They do the job, they're inexpensive. I mean, geez, you don't even have to spend like 200 bucks on a DeWalt. You can probably get it, you know, a cheaper one or, you know, another brand or something like that for a few, a few dollars less. The Evolution Power Tools, that saw runs like four to 500 bucks right now. Maybe you can get it less on sale, whatever. Of course, if you want to do a different metal, you got to change the blade out. I'll be very honest with you. I tried it on stainless steel and I fried that blade. It, it, did, not, it did not work out well. On aluminum, it'll slice it all day long. Nice and clean, everything's good. Unfortunately, not in this video. But uh, the steel blade, that, that sucker just keeps on going. That's a nice clean saw, that is really awesome. And uh, the only trade-off is it makes a lot of mess and there is uh, a ton of noise associated with it. I mean, that thing is, uh, that is ear piercing how it goes. Now on the band saws. Now band saws are definitely, uh, you know, I think a staple to your, you know, big fabrication or even small fabrication shop. The cut quality is clean. It's really awesome that you can line up uh, virtually anything inside of these things, but the only trade off is they cost several thousand dollars and the more features and the nicer, nicer they are, the more, the more they cost, right? So my band saw is, uh, I believe about $3,400 retail. And then the, the coolant is uh, roughly 40 to 50 bucks a gallon, and it holds like three or four gallons of uh, coolant inside the, uh, the tank in there. So, you know, I mean, there's this extra associated cost. Not to mention, when you get it out of the bandsaw, there's usually chips and fluid and stuff like that stuck to it. You got to at least wipe it down. So there's a little bit further prep involved in it, but the precision on it is incredible. Now, final thoughts on this one. That evolution saw is pretty serious stuff, man. I mean, that's, uh, you know, I was super skeptical, but that's pretty impressive, not gonna lie. 
Now that is going to wrap it up for this episode. And I want to thank you guys for watching as always. If you got any comments or questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments box below. You need to get a hold of any of the tools we got here. They're also in the link down in the description. Now, if you need to get in contact with us, hit us up on the fabricationseries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator and facebook.com slash the fabricator series. Also down in the comments and description below, you'll find all that information. So if you like what you saw, please consider liking and subscribing and hopefully I will catch you guys on the next episode.